<laughs> Today, <clears throat> I wanted to make sure that you guys did this lesson and got to this lesson, and then hopefully I can do another video or two. But I thought it was very important that we get this lesson done because it's on telling time, not just to the five minute, but to the exact minute. Your targets are, I can interpret clocks to read time to the nearest minute. I can interpret information to solve multi-step word problems. So I want to start off with a couple of things. One, it says for you to practice your um, multiples of three and four. So please do that out loud with a parent or whatever person is helping you. And then I also want to review how we divide sets into fractions. So if I have a set of 12, like a dozen eggs, we know that's 12 eggs, or if I have a dozen pieces of candy, and mom says that I can have one-fourth of the set, one-third of the set, or one-half of the set, and I have to decide which would give me more candy, I have to have a way to determine that. So we know that when we divide objects into fourths, we're going to have four equal sets. So if I count my multiples of four, of four, that will tell me how many would be in each set. So let's count fours until we say 12. Four, eight, 12. So how many would be in each set of four? There would be three. So I would have one, two, three, four. Four sets of three. So if I got a fourth of the set, I would get three pieces of candy. Well, let's think about how many pieces of candy I would get if I divided it into thirds. Well, let's count by threes and figure out how many pieces of candy would be in three sets. Three, six, nine, twelve. Well, if I divided my set of candy into thirds, I would have four pieces. So you notice what's happening with the size of my sets, right? Each time I divide <clears throat> by a smaller multiple or a small, my denominator changes, the size of my set changes, and I think you know where I'm going with this. If I have half of the set, I'm going to have two sets. Well, what's the size of that set? Let's count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I would have six pieces in each set. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if you were offered a fourth of a set of candy, a third of a set of candy, or a half of a set of candy, which would you choose? Most of you would choose the half because you want more candy. Remember, when we're dividing using fractions, the smaller the denominator, the bigger the piece. Or in this case, the smaller the denominator, the larger the set. So every time we get a bigger denominator, our set gets smaller. That's like going to McDonald's and saying, I want your biggest hamburger. Are you going to get a quarter pounder, which is this, four parts of quarter? Are you going to get a third of a pound? Or are you going to get a half a pound? Well, the biggest hamburger would be the half a pound because that means I took one piece of, one large piece of hamburger and divided it like this to get a half, like this to get a third, and like this to get a fourth. This is a half a pound. Look at how large that piece is. A third of a pound, your piece gets smaller, and the fourth of a pound, your piece your size of your hamburger will get even smaller still. So the more times you divide it, the bigger that denominator gets, the smaller your piece of hamburger, cake, whatever it is you're looking for, is going to get smaller as you divide it more often. Now today you're going to learn how to tell time, or we're going to introduce you on how to tell time to the minute. Some of you probably can already do this. If you can do the five minutes, I don't think that you'll have a lot of trouble. It says to show you some examples of counting tally marks, because essentially, telling time is similar to counting tally marks, because when we tell time, we use our five as the base, and then each of the small lines between are minutes. 
So this would be five minutes, and then I change to one, that would be six minutes, seven minutes, seven tally marks, or five, six, seven. If I had if my minute hand was here, I would say this is five minutes, ten minutes, after ten comes eleven, twelve. You see, all you're doing is changing from counting by fives to counting by ones. If you had no groups of five and you just had this, that would be one minute, two minutes, three minutes. You count each tick mark, this individual, by ones. Remember when it's on a number, one is five, two groups of five are ten, three groups of five are fifteen. So what I have done, I put a link to a Khan Academy activity in your lesson plan, but I'm also going to pull it up on the TV so that you can watch Khan Academy because you know I love some Khan Academy. I hope that it's not too bright for you to see because that will be a problem if it is, but let's see how it goes. Let's look at this clock and see if we can tell what time is shown on it. First thing, when we look at a clock, we have two hands, and that's because time is told in two parts. Time is told in hours. I'm going to draw the clock this part. And on a clock, the hours are represented by the short hand, and then the other part is minutes. And on an analog clock like this one, minutes are represented by the long hand. So let's look first at hours. We have this short hand, and it's between the 6 and the 7. What that means is it's after 6 o'clock, but not quite 7. Because our hand started at the top, and it worked its way around, and it's gone past 6 o'clock, but it's not 7. So it's 6 something. Six something. It might be 6.15, might be 6.45. We'll figure out the minutes next. But we know it's after 6 o'clock, but not a 7. So we'll put a 6 in our hours place. Then for minutes, we have this longer hand, which is pointing right here at this mark. And minutes, again, start at the top and work their way around. But now, each of these little spaces is one minute. So we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And when we get to this first square, this first where this one is, we've gone five minutes. Let's keep going like that. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten at this next one. And maybe you see a pattern here. Every time we get to one of these numbers or the squares, the bigger marks, we've gone five more minutes. So if we keep going, this will be 15 minutes past the hour. Keep going 20. Keep going 25. Now, we can't go all the way to the 6 because our minute hand stopped here. It hasn't reached this part. So after 25, we'll go back to counting by 1, the 1 minute. We have 25, 26, 27. The minute hand has gone past 27 of these marks, meaning it is 27 minutes past the hour. Let's try another one. The hour hand is between the 4 and the 5, which means it's after o'clock. It's some amount of minutes after four, but it is not yet five. And now let's look at our minute hand. The longer hand represents minutes. So the minute hand started at the top and it's gone five, ten, fifteen, not quite to twenty, so let's go back to fifteen and then count by one. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Our minute hand lines up to nineteen. So it is 19 minutes after 4, or 4.19. On this one, I encourage you to pause the video and see if you can figure out the time. Okay, let's try it together. Okay, so she said pause it. You'll give me just a second. I'm going to draw it. So let's look at our hour hand. Remember, we always start with the shorter one because that's the hour. It's past 7, but it's not quite the 8, so it's between 7 and 8. If it's between 7 and 8, remember, we hook back 
And our hour should be what? Seven. Now, if we count our groups of five all the way around to the nine, we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. And then we switch to ones. After 45 comes 46. Now let's see if we're correct. Hang on. So the hour again, the 20 and the 7 and the 8. So it's after 7, but not quite 8. And by looking at the hour hand, we can see it's quite a bit after 7, but it's almost to 8. And looking at the minute hand confirms that the minute hand's gone all the way to here. It's almost back to the top. And that minute hand, starting at the top, has gone 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, dear. 46 minutes past 46 minutes past 7. The time is 7.46. Okay, so that's not so bad, right? Not so bad. All right, the next one is a practice. And you can't see it on my screen. So what I would ask you to do is Get mom or dad or someone that's working with you to please, please, please pull up the second activity on the lesson plan and it will let you practice time to the minute, okay? Because you really need to do that. I know a lot of people have watches now that are digital. We have digital watches and clocks in our bedrooms that wake us up in the mornings, but there are still clocks that hang on the wall that are analog clocks, and you need to be able to um, tell time on an analog clock. Last thing, thinking cap. Cody played a game on the steps leading to the chuck wagon. The chuck wagon is where you go to get the food if you're working on a ranch. He started at the bottom. He climbed up seven steps. He went down three steps. He went up five steps. He went down eight steps. On what step did he end up? So let's think about what it just said. You may need to either draw it or make a combination. Okay, so he went up seven steps. Then he went down. If he went down, am I going to add steps or subtract steps? I'm going to subtract steps. He went down three. Then he went up five. Is going up subtracting or adding? It's adding. And then he went down eight. Is going down adding or subtracting? It's subtracting. So you have a long equation. 7 take away 3 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 take away 8 is 1. So after all of that up and down, Cody ended up on step 1. Now your job today is pages 323 and 324. In your math book and let me look at it and see what that entails. I know that we've skipped some pages and that's okay. I really, really, really would like for you to do both pages because both pages give you a lot of good practice. I especially, especially want you to do this page because it is telling time to the minute. Okay? So both pages are really good pages for practice. I don't want your brains to just turn into blobs. So that practice will be very good for you. And then I want you to do 324 because it's going to give you practice telling time to the minute. All right, that's your lesson for today. I hope you have a great day. I know that to some of you, telling time to the minute may not be new, but I wanted to make sure that I did.
did my part and I introduced it to you in class. Um, that's it for me for right now. You guys have a great day and I'll talk to you next time.